Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I'm here with the New Jersey Generals update through five games. Make my day. So here you can see we've got the standings in the AFC so far, and our Generals are leading the AFC East. You got the Generals on top in the AFC East with a 4 and 1 record, 110 points for and 54 allowed. And which is great. This 54 allowed is 54 points allowed in 5 games. It's crazy. Crazy good. It's under 11 points per game. Uh, you got the 95 Bills are 3 and 2. The 83 Jets are 2 3 and 0. Oh. The 68 Patriots are 1-4, and four, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, this is crazy, the 77 Pittsburgh Steelers, who were originally 9-5 in 1977, are 1-4, or 0 and, they're 0-4-1, oh, sorry, 0-4-1. Oh, hey, what happened? With 53 points scored and 106 given up. The steel curtain is not really all that steel. So now you got the AFC West. Kansas City Chiefs of 68 are 4 and 1. So are the San Diego Chargers of 83, also 4 and 1. The Denver Broncos of 88 are 2 and 3. The Michigan Panthers, the USFL Michigan Panthers, who people wanted to see in this league, are 2 and 3, and they've given they've scored 85 points. And given up 81, so they're going against the uh, they're going against the Pythagorean theorem uh, record or the Pythagorean record, which generally says if you score more points than you allow, the same thing in baseball. If you score more runs than you allow, you should have an over 500 record. And then you got the LA Express of 84, USFL, LA Express, one and four. So now moving on to the NFC. You have the, well, let's just rip it off. Rip it off. In the NFC, you can see you've got the, at the NFC East, you got the Indianapolis Colts of 95 at 5 and 0. Oh. You got the Philadelphia Eagles of 83 at 3, 1 and 1. And then you got the Carolina Panthers of 2018 at two and three. The New York Giants of 1968 are one and four. And then this is the Washington Federals of the USFL of 1984 are one and four, 74 points scored, 137 allowed. Very bad. Now down here, the NFC is interesting. You got, or the NFC West is interesting. You got the New Orleans Saints of 2018. They're 5-0. and oh. They've scored 186 points, and they've allowed only 73, which is why I wanted to take the Saints originally, although I'm doing quite well with the Generals. Now look at this. The Chicago Bears of 95 are 2-0-3. Oh, they haven't lost a game, but they've tied three. They played five games, and they tied three of them. It was sounding great, but I could have used a little more cowbell. That's crazy. So, um, they've scored 78 points and allowed 69. The LA Rams of 83 are 3-2-0. and oh. They've scored 133 points and allowed 114. The Green Bay Packers of 88 are 2-2-1. and one. They've scored 95 and allowed 92, and I think they were under 500 in real life, if I don't, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, and now the, this is also crazy. The Dallas Cowboys of 77. They were originally 12 and 2. 12 and 2 in real life in 1977. And they are 0 and 5. You can't handle the truth! And they've scored 88 points and allowed 113. Again, I think it kind of goes back to, you know, Staubach and... Um, Bradshaw playing in an era where if you passed, you passed downfield, low percentage passes. And they're playing in a league full of quarterbacks that do dump off passes and look in passes and, you know, that kind of thing. And so their completion percentage can't really rival the other quarterbacks in the league. 
and that goes on to hurt the offense. That's just a theory I have. But hey, if anybody out there has a theory as to why this is happening, why the Steelers and the Cowboys of 1977 suck in this league when they really were good, I mean, because I've also heard another theory that says that the USFL teams are made, the good USFL teams are made really good, like better than they would be if they were in a league with NFL teams because they're being made relative to the competition for the USFL, which is, you know, I mean, who am I to say that that's not true? That's a perfectly viable theory. However, there are only a few USFL teams in the league. There's us, there's the Michigan Panthers, there's the um, Washington Federals, and they weren't a good team anyway. Um, and the LA Express, I think, is it. So there's not that many USFL teams. The Cowboys are playing against other NFL teams, but they are playing against modern day NFL teams. And so you got like Drew Brees with a 75% completion percentage or something insane like that. So, you know, how are the Cowboys going to compete against that? And they got to play him twice. So, so we will rip this off and then we'll get into the New Jersey Generals stats. So now you got the Generals. We're four and one. You know about the points allowed, which was great. Here's our passing. You got Brian Seif, 126 attempts, 76 completed for 833 yards, seven touchdowns, five interceptions, and 81.9 percentage. He's not that good. Now you got Gene Bradley, who's completed five of 11 for 61 yards and an interception, a 25.2 rating. Gene Bradley uh, did not play because of an injury. He played because we were smoking the 68 Boston Patriots, so I gave Sype a few, uh, quite a few plays off and let Gene Bradley take over at quarterback. Um, and then even the, even the computer later in the game, in the fourth quarter, actually played Gene Bradley at quarterback. So now that's 137 passes, 81 complete for 894 yards, seven touchdowns, six interceptions. Our passing is really not that good. So it's really good that our running backs are awesome. You've got uh, Walker, who has 90, uh, Herschel Walker, 90 attempts, 363 yards, a four yard average per carry, 24 long, three touchdowns. He's fumbled three times and um, only lost one of them. Then you got Carthon, who's rushed 62 times for 321 yards, a 5.2 average, 30, uh, his long is 30. He's got a touchdown, and then nobody on this list has a fumble except when you get down to Brian's site. Now you got uh, Clarence Harmon, 21 rushes, 87 yards, a 4.1 average, 13 is as long, and a touchdown. Don Calhoun, 13 rushes, 48 yards, 3.7 yard average, 15 is as long, and a touchdown. Rod Peegs, 11 for 42 yards, 3.8, 18, and 1. And then Sipe has rushed three times for five yards, which is a 1.7 yard average per rush. And his long is six, and he did fumble, but he got it back. So what that translates to is 200 rushes for 866 yards, a 4.3 yard average, 30 is the long, and seven touchdowns, four fumbles, and only one lost. Now, look at how even the, the statistics are between the passing and the uh, rushing. 137 attempted passes, 200 attempted runs. 866 yards on the ground, 894 through the air. Seven touchdowns on the ground, seven touchdowns through the air. It's a pretty even offense. In fact, it's really, I would say, it, it, overall, I'd say it's more a rushing attack than passing because we've tried um, rushes um, well, something like 63 more times. So, um, but the yards are just about even. The touchdowns are dead even. Balanced attack. Now we'll get into some other stats that we have for the Generals. 
Here's New Jersey. Here's our opponents. Third down efficiency, we're at 46%. Our opponents are at 23%. Um, fourth down efficiency, we're at a stupendous 63%. And the opponents at 40 uh, average yards per play, we have 4.8, they have 4.3. There we're kind of even. Uh, net yards, though, we have 1,668 overall, which is 334 per game. They have 1,213, which is 243 yards per game. Penalties and yards, we have been penalized 25 times for 203 yards. They've been penalized 34 times for 286. And time of possession... We have overall, uh, we average 34 minutes per game with the ball, and our opponent averages 26. So all of those statistics that we've just gone over would tend to indicate that, yes, the um, New Jersey Generals would be a good team and are. We're 4-1 and one through five games. The only question is, are the Bills going to catch us because we have one loss and that loss is to the bills in overtime by the score of 13 to 10 and we play the bills one more time but even playing the bills one more time if we even if we beat them then we've split with them they're only one game behind us so if they make up the game somehow somewhere um, then we're tied with them and we were tied in the games against each other and then what happens? Yeah, well, we're going to have to see. Because the way the league is going to work is the winners of each division will play in the conference championship game. That's how it goes. So we have to be better than the Bills. We, we don't get to play the... Well, we may get to play the Bills if everything is tie, 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 tie right down the, you know, right down the list. Then we do play a, have a one-game playoff um, to see who wins the division. Hopefully it won't come to that. Hopefully we can just stay ahead of them. So that is your New Jersey general update at one third of the way through the, is it one third, five? Yeah, or roughly one third of the way through the season. And then we will, we'll keep giving you an update every once in a while, but just want to let you guys know, watch the generals. They're a good team. They're playing well. I got them playing well. I motivated those boys. So, um, but other than that, that's it for me right now. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.